Let me demonstrate how I do a pair of S-Bend seat stays using my tubing bender. Uh, so the bends, how I use BikeCAD to design the bends, where I'm gonna put them, what degrees of bend, then how I do some QC, some quality control, make sure that the tubes are coming out matched to each other, to the, the drawing that I did to design them. Let's get into it. I'm gonna bend these two tubes at the same time. They're 16 millimeters, which is 5 eighths of an inch. This is the clamp block assembly. And the clamp pin. Snug this up with my fingers. And I have a Sharpie mark here that I aligned that to the bottom of the tool. Now that's good and tight. I load in my follow bar. Put a little bit of pressure on this roller here. And I bend. I'm right on my mark. Back it off. Now I re release the roller's pressure. Remove the follow bar. Release the clamp block. There we are. So here they are after the bend. Like any bender of this style that doesn't have internal support, probably the biggest uh, single artifact you're going to see from the bend is right here at the end of the bend, if you can see it. There's sort of like a rolling pin action. There's material on the inside that uh, needs to go somewhere. It's getting stretched on the outside. It's kind of getting compressed on the inside. And it doesn't ripple or kink in this setup, but just at the end of the bend here, there's just a little bit of a hump. It's pretty subtle. It's pretty hard to see. Um, doesn't really leave any other rimples or uh, <laughs> ripples or kinks or lines or anything that are going to show through paint. It's very smooth. The beginning side of the bend, there's no there's no hump or anything here. It's just a very subtle little hump. You can kind of, man, it's hard to see. That's the worst of it. And this is at the tightest radius. So this is four and a half inch center line radius. At the larger radius, uh, that's much less pronounced. So according to my drawing in Bike Cat, I set these up for the second bend. These are going to be S-bend stays. Two bends in the same stay in plane with each other, so I used my phasing arm for that. Now they're set up. I'm just going to do the same old thing again. So without too much screwing around, I have a matched set of S-Bend seat stays for a mountain bike or whatever, and um, pretty flat here. You know, if they were bent crooked, you'd be able to tap them and they'd be, be wobbling all over the place. Um, they're pretty dang good. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, for as little experience as I have doing this, it was uh, pretty easy to get pretty decent matched results. And the the design of this, the numbers that I used to pull these, was all just taken out of BikeCAD. I made a quick visual rendering, and then uh, and then this is the result, and it looks pretty good. All right, so I made a pretty quick sketch here in BikeCAD, and I modeled the wheel's diameter and the, the width of the tire. And then I turned on the auxiliary stay view and it just shows me looking normal to the plane of the seat stays with the wheel in there. It shows me what that looks like. And, um, and then in the seat stays dialog box, you have different um, parameters that you can change for the seat stay. And so the, uh, you can do this in millimeters or you can do this as a ratio for how far along the tube is bend A and how far along the tube is bend B. You have the distance offset that the bend pushes, which is a linear dimension. So that's uh, B here and it's, uh, I think, D here. And then you have the radius of bend for each of them. And so I just did a quick sketch uh, with approximately the radius of my bender. And uh, I just tried to make it look decent around this wheel. And then, uh, 
And then I, I, I don't know in BikeCAD exactly how to pull out all the dimensions that I would like to for this. It would be great if they were dimensioned when you go to the tubing dialog box or in the dimensions dialog box, tubing, seat stays. Uh, I wish that it showed me some of the um, some of the dimensions I wanted for angles and stuff. But uh, since I didn't know how to find those, you can just do point to point measurements, uh, like linear dimension from one end or whatever, and that'll tell you how far along to start your bend. And then you can also do an angular dimension if you clear that. Start angular dimension. So I try and get it so it looks like it's parallel with the edge of the tube. And then I try and find what seems like the vertex of the bend. Pick vertex for angle. And then I try and make it look like it's parallel with the tube again. And almost at it and angular dimension and so yeah this one here looked like it was about 10 degrees of bend or you know 180 minus 10 would be 170 so I did a 10 degree bend here or that's what I was aiming for there's spring back with the tubes and you don't always know exactly how much spring back you're gonna have so it's a little bit of a guess until you get to know the particular tubing how much spring back you can accept, uh, expect for that you know particular um, uh, tubing and bend of angle and stuff. So this, I was going for 10, I bent it to I think 14, and uh, I haven't measured it yet, um, but uh, you can measure it pretty easily. And clear that dimension. So I did the same thing on the other end, and um, they're definitely uh, pretty symmetric, and they look pretty good to me, and uh, you, can, you can interrogate them further to see whether or not they're actually uh, to the spec, but if they weren't, if you didn't bend enough degrees, uh, you could put them back in the bender and rebend them, and over time you would learn uh, how much spring back to account for, so that stuff came out the first time every time. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of screwing around here in BikeCAD to pull up those numbers, and this sketch isn't necessarily perfect. You know, you want to know exactly how far spaced apart they are at the dropout, and how they interface with the other tubes. You want to know, uh, you want to have a reasonably accurate model of your tires. This doesn't look like enough clearance, honestly. Um, but anyway, this is just a quick sketch. Uh, you could, you know, if you practice with this method, you could get pretty dang good uh, pretty easily. And um, there might be more features in BikeCAD that help with this sort of thing. If you didn't have a way to model this and to measure the angles and stuff, uh, it would be really frustrating. And if you, if you were trying to do this, I mean, BikeCAD is great because it allows you to model. You can see what different things look like. You say, oh, I want a little bit more heel clearance, or what would it look like if I changed the radius of the die on this end, and you know, did a, you could do a larger radius bend here, and then a tighter radius bend here, whatever. Um, it's cool that you can model it and you can see it quickly. I think BikeCAD is, is decent with seat stays. Chain stays are tougher because a lot of times you're smooshing the tubes or something around the, the tire here and the chain ring, or you're using a chain stay yoke or something, but, um, uh, definitely for seat stays it's pretty powerful. For chain stays I think it could be fairly powerful. So with any tubing, if you do a bend, you might want to know the number of degrees that you've bent it to, and you could probably measure that with some sort of protractor, or you could do some trigonometry or something. What I like to do generally is usually there's still some straight section on the tube, and if you have a known flat surface, like I have this milling machine table here, you can just kind of sit the tube down on there, and then you can use one of these digital electronic digital Little angle gauges and you can set this on the part you want to measure and if you try and hold that still there it'll give you a pretty accurate reading of where you're at so what does that say that says 17 degrees and then uh, similarly I can put it on uh, this is a different degree of bend and I can set this part here and it's not incredibly accurate but for the purpose of uh, uh, measuring the degree of bend in your in your stays, it's fine. It says 6.2, and so now you know I have an idea of how far I've bent them. You can do that check while you're bending and reload them into the bender and bend a little further if you need to. Uh, but over time, you get a pretty good idea of how much spring back you can account for with uh, every bend you do. In addition to that little tap test that you can do to make sure that the the bends are in plane with each other along their length, uh, you might want to know that the tubes are actually matched. And so here we can test that. I set up these magnets on my table and you could you could 
you know, create your own version of this any number of ways. But what this is here is uh, these three magnets create a, a, a positive location for this. So the tube is up against this one, it's back against this point, and it's back against this point. And so there's not really anywhere else it can go. And now I use my uh, test indicator here set up so that it's hopefully right on the apex of the tube uh, and then, you know, right on the apex of the bend. And I just push it up against here and I have it about zeroed. And now I swap out for the other tube and I put it in the same way. And now it looks like I'm off about, uh, that's one thousandth of an inch. So each, each tick mark on this is half of a thousandth of an inch. And so it's pretty cool. Uh, I know that these are really bent pretty close to each other. And then similarly, I can flip the tube around and I can measure the other bend. And now I, I wanna change the, the relationship of these a little bit. Back this out of the way. Something like this looks good to me now. And I'll put my indicator on the apex of the bend, kind of measuring perpendicular to the bend. Fine tune it in to zero. Oh. Oh. I can swip, switch the tubes out. So this one is showing more deviation for whatever reason. This way you can measure what you're doing. I mean, this still is only uh, two human hairs. You know, that's eight thousandths of an inch, so that's two human hairs. Nobody's gonna see that with the naked eye. But I think uh, the things you could do to get this even more consistent is, I, I just rough cut these to length. If you started with tubes that were precisely the same length as each other, and if when you loaded them both into the bender, if you, uh, if you were very careful to get them exactly the same length into the bender, um, and then you end over end them, you can measure off of the other end, and you know that they're gonna be pretty consistent, whereas these are uh, a little bit different in length, maybe uh, you know, 16th of an inch or a millimeter or something like that. And so when you're trying to uh, get the exact same bend, you're gonna, you're gonna notice more deviation. This is a good way to measure that if you're finicky about it, if you got tighter tire clearance. Uh, a lot of times this isn't gonna be that critical, but um, you know, it's good to be able to measure things so you know where you're at and you know where the gremlins are coming from these little uh, issues that are poking their head up, you can you can root out the source of them. Is it that your frame fixture is not aligned? Is it that your tubes are not straight? Is it that your mitering fixture is cutting off center? If you have a way to measure stuff, you can figure out where your problems are coming from. You don't always need to measure, but it's nice to have a system. And all this stuff here is really pretty simple, pretty cheap. You might not have this sophisticated of an indicator, uh, but there's there's different ways to do it. And I like I like a you know flat table like this really helps you root out where uh, where you're at with stuff. Sorry if this video feels a little bit disjointed. I recorded this over two days. And and uh, it maybe doesn't have the most continuity. But anyway, I wanted to make a video about S-Bends and I was doing some. Uh, we're, we'll be doing more different test bends and demo bends and stuff. Uh, I just wanted to share some of the tips that I had uh, for you know how you can make a plan and, and follow through with it and make your bends and get on to the next step in the build process. Hit that subscribe button. We're just gonna keep creating all these videos about the topic of bike frame building. And if you're watching this one, you're probably interested in bike frame building. You're not gonna wanna miss any others, right? So uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.